Hello. In this video, we will be going over the lecture example on Kirchhoff's Laws. Please feel free to rewind and pause as you need to make sure you get all this in your notes and uh, take your time with it so that the concepts start to sink in. All right, as a recap, we started by guessing the direction of all the currents in the circuit, and there are three sections in series. The first section is at the top, and we guessed that the current was moving clockwise, and we labeled it I1. We guessed in the middle section that the current was going to the right, we called it I2, and we guessed in the bottom that the current was moving also clockwise, we called it I3. Remember, it doesn't matter if your guess is right or wrong, as long as you are identifying the different spots where current can be different in any section in series. So as soon as you see a junction, you got a new current. So these are three currents. Our next step was to label the polarities, and we remember that the current flows from positive to negative, or in other words, current flows into the positive end of the resistor. So those are what our pluses and minuses should look like for this problem. Next, we choose a loop to go through in the circuit, and we're choosing to go through the top half of the circuit uh, clockwise, and we'll see what we get when we do the voltage law. Now, we'll start the equation um, down here in the bottom left corner. Remember, again, when you're solving these yourself, it doesn't matter where you start and what direction you go, as long as you have one closed loop. So as we move through the battery, uh, that's our first component that we hit. We go from the negative side to the positive side, so that's a gain of 12. So the potential difference is 12, so our voltage gain is just given by the battery 12. So we have a positive 12 to begin. Next, we move through the top resistor from positive to negative, so that's a drop. So we're going to subtract the potential difference across this resistor. Since it's a resistor, we usually don't know the voltage, um, so we need to use V equals IR. And if we use V equals IR, the potential difference V across the resistor is the current, which is I1, times the resistance, which is 4 ohms. So we'll do I1 times 4. 4I1 is the potential difference across this resistor. Again, that's just coming from V equals IR. Next, we come down this way. We continue on our loop, and we're getting close to the end. We have one more thing to go through, which is the 8 ohm resistor. Notice we go from the negative to positive side. So that's a gain. And we're going to add the potential difference across this resistor. Again, V equals IR. We do I2 times the 8 ohms, and we get 8I2. So we add that. And now we're back to where we started. So we set the sum equal to zero. This is our first equation then. Again, it comes from going around this imaginary loop, adding any potential gains, subtracting any potential drops, setting it all equal to zero. We can't solve this yet because we have two unknown variables and only one equation, which means we need to set up a system of equations to solve. We'll need at least one more. So we'll do another loop and just for fun, let's go the other way through the bottom. So now we'll go counterclockwise through this loop. Again, it doesn't matter. And let's start at the bottom right corner. Why not? So we'll start down here, and we'll go through the loop this way and do the voltage gains and voltage drops. So I'll usually label these if you have multiple loops. It'll help you keep your work clean. So I'll call this L2, and we'll come up with an equation for this loop. We go from negative to positive, so this is to begin through the forearm resistor. We have a gain, negative to positive. Again, V equals IR. The resistance is 4. The current is I3, so we'll start with plus 4I3. As we come through this resistor, we also have a gain. We go from negative to positive, and we'll go through the 8 ohm resistor with a current of I2. V equals IR says this potential difference must be 8I2 which is a gain. And last, we pass backwards through the battery. And remember, we're just doing an imaginary loop here, so there's nothing actually moving. But if I trace the loop this way, I move from the positive to negative through the battery, which means this is a drop of 9. 9 is the potential difference given the loop. Now you're back to where you started. We set it equal to 0. And so you may be thinking, I'm all done. I came up with my two equations. But wait, you add in an I3. 
So now we have one, two, three unknown variables, which means we need at least one more equation. You might remember from algebra, the rule is you need as many equations as you have unknowns. Once you have that, you can solve. The third equation is typically where you'll use the current law. And that's going to be the easiest one to use. You could set up another loop with the outer circuit. But the current law is always an easy equation. So we're looking here at the junction on the left. And we say the current coming in is positive, current going out is negative. So I3 goes in, we say that's positive. I1 and I2 are leaving, so they're negative. I3 minus I1 minus I2 equals 0. If you want to jump right to I3 equals I1 plus I2, if that makes more sense to you, you can definitely just do that right away. All right, now what we have is a system of three equations with three unknown variables. This is by far the most important part of this process. If you can get here, have your three unknowns and they're properly set up and everything on your circuit is labeled correctly and you got your plus and minuses in the right spot um, and your work is clear, this is the vast majority of what you're assessed on. After this, it's a math problem. And you do want to be able to do it, but it's, it's definitely not the most important thing for this class. So we're going to talk about how to solve this system of equations. Now, if you're super slick and you know how to use a matrix and you know how to use poly smelt on your calculator or something like that, you can go right ahead. And if you want to go ahead and solve now using that and go to the end of the video and see how you did, go ahead. I'm going to walk through the algebra here. I will later talk about the negative current and what that means. So if you're doing some math shortcuts, do uh, tune in for that. All right, but we'll do this old school. We're just going to substitute and move some stuff around and see if we can't solve this system of equations. The first one I would always recommend to use is the current equation because it's the easiest to move and the easiest to isolate. So we'll choose one current to isolate for because I can add I1 and I2 to both sides. I'm just going to solve for I3. So this is a, the current one again is always a simple one to solve. We can always isolate for one of these currents. I just chose to isolate for I3, got it in terms of I1 and I2. What that means is I can choose my equation that has I3 in it, which is this one, and substitute. So we'll take a look at this equation with the I3. And now instead of I3, I'm going to substitute I1 plus I2. So I substitute that in. Next, we distribute the 4. Now we combine our like terms of 4i2 and 8i2 gives us 12i2. And if you look, now we have a whole new equation in terms of i1 and i2 and some number. If you look up here, we have another equation in terms of i1 and i2, which means we're getting closer. We now have two equations with only two unknowns. So we should be able to combine these in some way to solve. There's a nice trick that'll work out well for this problem. If you remember it, you can always add two equations together or subtract them. And since I have a negative 4i1 here and a positive 4i1 there, I think if I add these together, uh, I'll get rid of the i1 terms. So we'll drop it down and just rearrange so everything is in the same order. Boom. Now we can add these equations to each other negative 4i1 plus 4i1 amazingly adds to 0. Now I have 8 plus 12 gives me 20i2, and 12 minus 9 gives me 3. Now I'm pretty much there. Uh, the only variable is i2, so we can go ahead and solve, subtract 3 from both sides, and divide by 20, you should get i2 equals negative 0.15 amps. Okay, we should talk about what the negative means. All the negative means, if you find a negative current, it means you guessed the wrong direction in your initial diagram. So on our diagram, we could write something like this. We drew the current to the right, and the math is coming out to tell us that means negative 0.15 amps. Had we drawn it to the left, we would have had found positive 0.15 amps. These two things mean the same, and you do not need to change your sketch or change your answer. It would be 
bad if you did, because all your equations have the assumption built in that the current goes this way. And then that side of the resistor is positive and that, that side is negative. So it's absolutely fine to keep the negative current and your arrows in the quote wrong direction because negative 0.15 amps to the right is exactly the same as positive 0.15 amps to the left. All right, you're saying exactly the same thing both ways. So resist the urge if you guess wrong to go back and try and change things because you'll end up probably messing up your other equations which need that negative now. And we'll look at how we plug that in. So I'll come back to one of my equations from before that came from one of the loops. And since I know I2, that means I should be able to solve for I1. First we'll isolate, add it for I1 to both sides, divide by four, and then we can plug in our value of I2. Now this is what I'm getting at, that you have to make sure that you use the negative since you found a negative answer. You can't just say it's 0.15 um, and switch the direction of your arrow. All your equations is, had a, that assumption built in, so you have to keep the negative. So you put in negative 0.15 and you're going to get uh, 2.7 amps, that's I1. And last, again, the current law is a good one once you're down towards the end because it's a very simple equation. Uh, I, it's even already isolated for I3, so all I need to do is do I1 plus I2, and again, I2 is negative, so what they end up really subtracting. And again, if you ignore the negative, it's not going to work. And so we see I3 equals 2.55 amps. And there you go. Those are your three currents. So uh, as you can see, a lot of this problem works out to be an algebra problem at the end, but do focus on the setup. If you can set up your loop equation, that is by far the most important.